everybody. I'm Dan. I'm Lisa. And we're Always, Always on, on Liberty. Liberty. Hey, today we're going to talk to you a little bit about traveling with cats. So stay tuned and come right back. Welcome back to our channel. We're here with Chrissy. Chrissy, see? Chrissy is our, one of our main coon cats and she is a travel cat. She's been traveling for uh, oh, over five years with us now. And we have Candy, but Candy is napping on the couch behind us. But anyway, we're gonna talk about traveling in an RV with cats. Most people travel with dogs. Well, we didn't have a dog when we left home, so we traveled with our two main coon cats. And it's a little bit of a challenge. It's a little bit different than traveling with a dog. You just don't take them for a walk and things like that when you want to create whoa, a little whoa, space. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yes, we do take them for walks. They well, got their little harnesses, their little clothes, and they also have their little leashes and stuff like that. But so. There was a recent photo of me walking Chrissy at yeah. uh, the Nomad Overlook when yeah. we stayed in South Dakota. So it was, it, it can be done, but it is a little bit different. But some of the challenges that you face when you travel with your cat, one of the first things that people ask us is, where do you put your litter box? Woo! Um, now, we uh, did a lot of research uh, before we even started our van. Um, and actually, part of the things we were looking for when buying an RV it was where to put that litter box. Now, you know, we've we've read a lot where people were putting them in uh, their dinette in a bench seat. Yeah, that's not Yeah, me. we're not putting the litter box in the <laughs> no. smell of, if you've ever smelled Chrissy after she's taken her little morning ritual, you'll say, no, no. I'm not drinking coffee with that. It's no bueno. No, no. So the, uh, the seating area in the dinette was definitely out sure. and then we were looking at well what about in the uh the living area i should say um but then again you know we sit there and watch tv or we're, yeah, we're playing just, a game and, and we're like yeah and, no and they need privacy they're no different than people they want privacy when they use the bathroom the litter box it's the same thing for them so it's, it wouldn't be fair to have them out in the public eye so to speak well and see chrissy you gotta not show that <laughs> um so we decided we wanted to um, utilize the bathroom where it belongs, right, Dan? Exactly. Okay, so we were looking for a big enough shower because we have two cats. We have a bigger uh, litter box, so the shower had to accommodate the size. Yeah. So um, that was the answer to our litter box question. And, you know, if ever we have to uh, take a shower... Us. Uh, you know, when we take a shower, we just move the litter box out to where we need to and uh, take our showers and then we put it back. It's not a big deal. It's a couple of extra steps, but it keeps the main living area of the RV litter box free and there's not litter tracked all over and things like that. So it is a couple extra steps when we shower, but really it's the best solution we have found for this RV and for us anyways. All right. So then um, let's talk about their food and um, their, their eating. Uh, and this is kind of a two-parter. Um, both of our kitty cats started on a dry food regime, which was super easy. We kept Very their dry easy. food in a plastic container, yeah. so it's, it stayed dry it was and dry, fresh. bug free, things right. like that. Right, right. Um, and then two, three years into our RV and we had the unfortunate um, occurrence where Chrissy was diagnosed with diabetes. Sure. Um, and how we found that out is we noticed some peculiar uh, behaviors of Chrissy. She, her hair was falling out. She had become very, very thin. 
Um, she was always tired and sleepy, more than an average cat. <laughs> oh, wow. And um, she was, she became temperamental. Um, there was just a lot going on. And the biggest telltale sign was she would eat ravenously. Yeah. So we did some research, um, which led us to take her to the vet when we were in Jordan, Minnesota. 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 Right. We took her and it was a no brainer. They did the blood test and she, the results came back that she was diabetic. So we had to change our whole lifestyle, not just Chrissy's, but our whole lifestyle. We had to put her on a wet food feeding regime mm -hmm. many times a day because one thing with diabetes is you don't want to uh, enter into hypoglycemia. Right, and, and Chrissy was an insulin dependent diabetic cat. So she got shots twice a day, just like a person. We monitored her blood with a glucose monitor, mm -hmm. just like a person. Uh, we were very fortunate though, because we were able to curb Chrissy's diabetes with a change in diet and some exercise. She was only on uh, insulin for what, six months? About six months. So, I mean, we had a very regimented schedule for those six months because she got her insulin every 12 hours almost to the minute and her feeding schedule was very regimented too to make sure that she kept the, her blood sugar as, as close as we could to normal but once we realized that we could control her diabetes with the right food and the right amount of exercise then we we're able to get her off of insulin so now being off of insulin has changed our lives again have gotten much easier than they were when Chrissy was a full-blown diabetic. She was, she's still diabetic, she's just in remission. So we still monitor her blood. Lisa checks it with a glucose meter uh, and Lisa can pretty much tell or Chrissy tells us, hey look, I'm low on blood sugar today. I need some extra gravy. I need some extra carbohydrates in my right. diet. So it's it's been a part of our lives as far as tra traveling with a cat, but you can travel with your pet if your pet has a special medical need. It's something that you can easily do as long as you plan for it. Not, not too long after Chrissy was diagnosed, I did write a blog about mm -hmm. diabetes and how we handled it. So you might want to check that out. Sure. It's a little more in depth. Um, but now um, she's completely off of the insulin. Mm -hmm. And like Dan said, she just depends on food um, to keep her in check. And um, so we have her on canned Fancy Feast. And of course, candy, the, she'll eat anything. <laughs> well, and, and that, the, the point here being is you need to stay in contact with your vet. Your, your, mm -hmm. your pet builds a history, a medical history with your vet. So just because you go on the road, doesn't mean you should break contact with the veterinarian right. that your pet is familiar with. And Chrissy had seen the same vet for seven or eight years. So he had a pretty good idea who she was and what her life was about and things like that. It was fairly easy. The, the prescription went through Walmart. So we right. picked up her insulin at Walmart. Her we picked up needles, this, yeah, everything. Yeah, the syringes all came from Walmart. Yep. So as long as you maintain, maintain contact with your vet and you know the history, it's pretty yeah. easy to manage that special need on the road for your cat. Yeah, and our vet, you know, what would happen is I would text him mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I would take her readings, take a picture of it and forward it yeah. to our vet. So he kept in touch that way. And um, when we would go back to Kentucky where he's located, we would make an appointment for yeah. him, her to go be seen and um, get her checkup and things like that. It was really no different than you going to back to the town you left out of when you went full timing or went on the road so you could visit your family doctor, or your normal doctor. It was the same basic idea. We did have some people ask us, it's a viable question, what did we do with the used syringes? Well, now you can go in almost every restroom yeah. and you can find the little- There's a sharps um, container so you can deposit them in. Right, or you can take them to a pharmacist yeah. or a medical doctor, yeah. they have the container containers and what we did is to keep them safe we would use a plastic water bottle put them in there mm -hmm. and then when it was time to take them uh, to be properly disposed of we took them with exactly. us. Exactly so I mean it's, it was just another thing you know traveling with a cat again cats are special needs no different than dogs right it's just as easy to travel with a special need cat as it is with a special need dog there's no difference. So um, our sleeping arrangements <laughs> well okay um, we had the bad habit of when they were babies of letting the baby in the bed. No, no. Well, our mother, did. our mo our mother told us never put baby in the bed. Well, we get that now, but it's too late. 
so they sleep with us now when we had our uh, fifth wheel toy hauler and our fifth wheel landmark it was no big deal because we had a, a king size yeah, bed there was a lot of room we had dan's side we had my side and the girls chrissy and candy slept in the middle and it worked fabulous nobody nobody got in each no. other's space it's easy to manage right but now that we're in our mini moho our 25 foot little motorhome that changed because oh, we wow. went to a short queen yeah so we're we're all fighting for real estate when and we sleep at night so be because of that we've created some places some safe havens for the cats to go to get out from underfoot we have a loft we have a, a sleepover cab in this motorhome so lisa has placed a couple beds up there for chrissy to sleep and it seems to be chrissy's penthouse so to speak that's right. her favorite place to go <laughs> we've put a couple cushions on the dinette bench seats yeah so if somebody wants to sleep there they can we even have a cushion in between the, the the chairs of the motorhome so oh, the, the cockpit the, yeah the cockpit chairs so when we're driving down the road candy, candy almost always in. sleeps on the in a bed there yeah chrissy normally sleeps on the couch so if you create some alternate spaces for that cat to get to whether they're high because they like some height or whether it's a place they can lay and look out the window you notice when we started chrissy was on the table sometimes we let them sleep on the table because you know what they're cats and they're gonna do what they want to do and, when you're not around anyways and this is where the window is you sure. you have to let your kitty cats look out the window yes. you know be a little bit um, engaging and um, have a little excitement so they could watch people outside or dogs or whatever's out there birds um, and sometimes if we're somewhere for a long time I know we did this with our fifth wheel we got one of those suction cup um yeah. hummingbird feeders and we stuck it to the window and that was chrissy and candy's favorite activity it's, dude that is cat tv i'm yeah. telling you it is the funniest thing the the, the hummingbird feeder <laughs> stuck to the side of the window outside <laughs> the cat is inside chattering and squeaking and making all these sounds thinking i'm going to get that hummingbird at some point but it's almost like wiley e. coyote the roadrunner that's pretty funny yeah and you know what's funny is we have to clean the windows because oh, yeah. of the cat spit yeah. which is kind of hilarious it is good entertainment we don't watch a lot of television so cat no. tv is a pretty good substitute for us no no so another thing um a lot of people have asked us is uh rv furniture um is that it's not leather don't let them tell you oh no. you have leather furniture no it's pleather it's plastic leather and it is very very susceptible to cat claws and stuff yeah. so we have figured out some um some remedies to that that they don't tear up the furniture um we've used uh, some gripper pads yeah. and um, actually shelf liner in one place and we cover it so when chrissy jumps up to the loft she's not going to claw the furniture we also got those padded um bath mats yep. they're like a velour on top and they're rubberized on the bottom and we put those on the cushions even the cockpit cushion where they may be so they're you know it, it kind of preserves our furniture a little bit and it doesn't slip if they make a sudden move or anything like that and it, it, it helps a lot to preserve the cushions and they have a scratch box they have a scratch post yep. and things like that but they normal they just put their claws out especially if we're moving because they sense the motion in the motorhome and they want to be stable when they jump up on the on the couch or on the chair or whatever right so those cushions make it those little cushions make a really big deal to them right now when we were in our fifth wheel and we had that awesome uh workspace in the back um what we did is um we got these tubes and we wrapped we um, twine around them mm -hmm. and slid them up on the legs of the workspace table and they loved them um, because we did, we kept tripping over a scratch post yeah. so we had to come up with something like that so uh, you might want to check that out on our blog too it was a how-to and we're debating on doing that here we have a single table leg at this table and there's a possibility we may do that in the future and what it does is eliminates one more thing you have to put away when you get ready to travel and right. things like that and it's just a natural place for them to go they scratch it and right. they don't scratch the furniture that way and and cats they do need that it's a anxiety outlet um it also keeps their claws uh you know sharp that it's in like the puncture the rest of the furniture <laughs> 
but in the event that they do get out, they do have a defense mechanism and keep them, you know, from being attacked or whatever. Yeah, our ca our cats have full claws. They have full claws front and back. Right. They uh, are well marked with tags, the rabies tags. They have the phone number on their collar, just yes. like a dog and stuff like that. Now, we don't let them outside unattended, but if they ever did get out, they're, are, they're both chipped and things like that. So we would be able to identify them and somebody should be able to tell us, hey, look, I've got your cat, come and get this thing. When we had our fifth wheels, we still have got to get them yet for our motor home here. But on our fifth wheel, we did have a little decal mm -hmm. that had, we please did. rescue our two. And we put cats and circled it and put a number two. We also included our telephone number that in the event someone accidentally disconnected our power on a really hot day or the campground lost power or whatever, that they knew that they could get a hold of us in case of emergency. Um, one thing we'll touch base on real quick is we're headed for Mexico in yes. the not too distant future. Yes. And there's some very specific requirements if you're going to travel across the border with your pet. So I'll at least tell you a little bit about what we're going to overcome and how we're going to do it to get them to go to Mexico with us. In order to go to Mexico, you're going to need a pet certificate. And Mexico government requirement is you have to get that certificate um, no more than 10 days prior to you arriving in Mexico. And it has to be by a veterinarian. And you, if you ask for it, they'll know what it is for international sure. travel. Mm -hmm and make sure that it's dated properly and it has your cat's name and all that. It would be also a great idea to just turn that into a pet uh, veterinarian visit. Sure. Make sure a checkup. right, that they have their prescriptions updated, all that stuff. So when you go abroad, that you're not scrambling no. for or running out of medication. So that pet certificate you need to have before you can go abroad to either Canada or Mexico, or even if you are gonna fly with your pets. Now, a lot of people ask us when we travel, do we kennel our, our cats? And we do not. Mm -mm. Our cats have free roam in the motorhome when we're traveling. Um, and they stay pretty well in one spot all the time. But we do have friends who actually kennel their cats and they keep them in the kennel, whether it's in the back of a truck because they're hauling a fifth wheel well, or a we travel trailer. we did that trail. for a while. Right, we did that. When they traveled in the pickup truck, they traveled in a kennel because I was afraid they would get out accidentally if we left the door mm -hmm. open or a window too cracked too low or something like that. We don't have those same type of issues in the motorhome, so now they have free range. They seem to be happier. They seem to be more comfortable with travel instead of riding in their carriers. But we do have a carrier for each one of them in case we need to evacuate because of a tornado or a veterinarian visit or something like that. Right. We have them stored up in the loft. They each have their own carrier, so it's very specific mm -hmm. to them. It has their own smells and scents and things like that in it. And we don't ever mix and match. But it's just something you need to be aware of. Some people will prefer to travel with their cat in the carrier, mm -hmm. and other people will prefer to travel with that cat roaming around in the RV. It's really a personal preference, and we don't dictate either way what somebody else should do. Okay, now, um, you know, besides taking our kitty cats on walks um, on their leashes with their harnesses, we also have a cat tent. We do. And we it's, it, it's a screen tent made for cats or pets. Um, so we'll put a link of that in the uh, comments. Um, but it is pretty uh, freeing for them that they're not leashed, but they are surrounded that um, they're kept safe yeah. a little bit. It, it, it's, it's a pretty neat little pop-up tent. It's a screen tent. It mm -hmm. goes together very quickly. Yeah. It's very lightweight. Um, it holds both of them, no problem. It's pretty good size. And it keeps a little bit of sun off of them. It keeps them protected from bugs and things like right. that, like mosquitoes and ticks and things like that that you know could, could bite them. It also keeps them corralled. So if we yeah. had to grab them real quick because of a loose dog or a coyote or right. a hawk or an eagle or something like that, right. we want them protected so we can grab them and get them inside if there's a predator and they become the prey. Right, right. Okay, so we covered all that. Let's talk about some of the cons of traveling with cats. And, you know, we <laughs> love our girls. Chrissy's 11 years old and can or uh, 12. 12, she'll be 12. She'll be 12. And Candy's 10 years old. Um, so they're entering into their senior cat uh, oh, yeah. stages. So uh, things are, or the dynamics are changing a little bit. So um, one of the biggest issues we have when we are in this small motorhome is, oh my God, they are underfoot all 
the time. And like, I don't know how many times we have accidentally stepped on their piggies. And, and you and get their an tails. unbelievable sound when you go. <laughs> I mean, if people were next to us, they'd think we're killing our cats. We're not killing our cats. It's just they're they got in the way and um they're they're not learning <laughs> it, it is challenging traveling with them especially in a much smaller rv in a bigger rv it's not as big a deal but in a smaller rv it, it is a bigger challenge so we have to look where we place our feet every time we take a step and they choose to, to sleep right behind lisa if she's washing dishes at the sink yeah or if she's cooking or if i'm doing something they want to sleep right under your feet so again we're trying to we're promoting different sleep spots for them but sometimes it just doesn't work out. So no. you have to be very conscious, especially in a small place where you're putting your feet so you don't step on your cat. Yeah. Uh, one thing I did want to mention is um, we don't always run our air conditioners. It might We might not yeah. be able to because we're boondocking or whatever. We use these small fans, mm -hmm. which I'll put in the comments the link to. But we use these small USB fans that we can charge up like before we go hiking or something. We'll charge them up. And then we'll set them on the floor or near their favorite spot. Where they're sleeping. Yeah, and turn them on so there's air circulation in the RV. Yeah. So they're not overheated. And unlike dogs, cats, I don't know, they're they're heat seekers. They don't seem to be as sensitive to the heat as most dogs do. Oh. But we are very conscious of it. We do not have an alarm system or anything built in. There are some on the market today, and we haven't tested any. So we can't tell you what works and what doesn't work for us because we haven't tested right. any for ourselves but we are very conscious we have a, a max fan that can be set to open at a certain temperature inside through an automatic setting so we've done that but we're very conscious to leave windows open in fans and if it's too hot we just stay home and run the generator run the air conditioner for boondocking or we go to a park and plug it in but we're like everybody else you know we're, we pay very close attention to the heat we don't want heat to affect our cats just like people wouldn't want it to affect their dogs and things like that Okay, so um, there was one other thing we wanted to talk about was what if we have to leave, like go on um, uh, fly out, or we have to leave the RV in an emergency to go see family right. or whatever. Well, first of all, this was one of the reasons why we got a motorhome is so it's small enough that we could take off and go. Um, so that was one of the big reasons, but um, we do not put them in a kennel, no. um, like a boarding, because our kitty cats don't do well in closed, in cages at all for a long period of time. And it's, oh. I mean, you have, you have all the pros of having your companion with you yes. and you know, you've had them all these years and you're very close to them and stuff like that. But the biggest con is, is they can be restrictive. If you need to do something at short notice or fly out or whatever we just can't go park the right. motor home or park the rv in a parking lot somewhere plug it in let the refrigerator right. run and, and walk away because we have the responsibility of the fur babies so if our family wants us to come and visit at christmas they have to understand that um, first of all it's winter time and we're not driving right. the motor home we all have to give and take with that so if we do have to leave the rv and go fly somewhere we generally will find a good RV resort or park yep. that we're familiar with. Um, one of them we stay at is in either San Antonio or Castroville at Alsatian, yep. or we'll go to Pahrump at the Wine Ridge um, because we know regulars who are staying there, residents. And we hire them to come take care of our kitties, feed them, uh, scoop their poop, and um, kind of spend some time. So. Uh, uh, hold on, we apologize for that. We are in near a railroad, so. Imagine a railroad track through yeah. the Midwest. Wow, we're in South Dakota right, right. now. Kind of hanging out at a little tiny city park that you've probably never heard of. <laughs> so we're gonna close that with this, that you can travel in an RV with kitty cats. There's a lot to take in. We hope this video gave you a bit of insight, um, but get you excited that your little feline friends can have just as good a time and be good travelers with you. They can enhance your travel experience and it is part of your family. Uh, we, we don't really recommend getting rid of your pet just because no, you're going on a no. road. We think pets are forever. forever. Once you make the commitment, then you're committed forever. So you can have a good time with them and they do enhance your RVing experience. Right. So thank you for tuning in. Um, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and any questions you have, please ask them in the comments. We'd be more than happy to engage and answer them. And until next time, uh, underway the is the, the only, only way. way.